Hi and welcome to lesson 12.3 which is all about experimental probability of compound events and our question is how do you find the exper experimental probability of a compound event? Well let's explore compound probability. A compound event is an event that includes two or more simple events such as flipping a coin and rolling a number cube. Before it was just flipping a coin or just rolling a number cube. Now it's both. A compound event can include events that depend on each other or are independent. Each uh, Events are independent if the occurrence of one event does not affect the probability of the other events, such as flipping a coin and rolling a number cube. Because when you know the result of the number cube has nothing to do with what happens to the coin. So what are the possible outcomes of flipping a coin once? Well, you can get heads or you can get tails. Okay. What are the possible outcomes of rolling a standard number cube once? You can get one, two, three, four, five, or six. There you go. List, uh, complete the list of all the possible outcomes for flip, flipping a coin and rolling a number cube. Well, this H stands for heads. So you can get heads and one. You can get heads and one heads and two, heads and three, heads and four, and five or six. So heads and one, two, three, four, five, six. You can also get tails and one through six. So there are a total of 12 possible outcomes for this compound event. Here are the 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Flip a coin and roll a number cube 50 times. Use tally marks to record your results in the table. I did this. Here are 50 tally marks. And just for fun, I don't know if for fun, but I was just curious. I had 11 uh, results. Uh, one happened 11 times, two happened seven times, three happened five times, four happened eight times, five happened 11 times, and six happened eight times. And Based on your data, which compound event had the greatest experimental probability and what was it? Well, tails and one. That happened the most right there. What happened the least? Tails and five. That had happened only twice. So let's draw some conclusions. Do you expect to have the same probability for each possible combination of flips and rolls? <clears throat> well, I do, but in this case, no, because I do not have enough results. If I did this 200 times, 300 times, the more times I do this, the more even the distribution will be, and I would expect <clears throat> the same probability for each combination. But we need more events. Next, calculating experimental probability of compound events. The experimental probability of a compound event can be found using recorded data. Here's example one. A food trailer serves chicken and records their order size and sides on their orders as shown in the table. Here's the table. What is the experimental probability that the next order is for three pieces with coleslaw? Well, let's find the total number of trials first. We have to add up all these numbers together, which they did here, <coughs> and that's 330. Next, we're going to find the number of orders that are three pieces with coleslaw. That's 55. And then we find the experimental probability. The probability of getting, uh, of getting three piece and coleslaw is 55, 55 out of 330. And that simplifies to 1 6. You can divide them both by 55. So the experimental probability that the next order is for three pieces of chicken with coleslaw is 1 6. Next, your turn. You're going to try this on your own. Pause it and come back to see if you got the same answer as I did. Drink sales for an afternoon at the school carnival were recorded in the table. Here. What is the experimental probability that the next drink is a small cocoa? Well, 60 out of the total here. When you add them all up, that's 400. I simplified that. I divide them both by 4 to get 15 out of 100. And I stop there because ooh, 15 out of 100, that's what percent means is out of 100. So I just stopped there and said, hey, it's 15%. Next. We're going to use a simulation to make a prediction. You can use a simulation or model of an experiment to find the experimental probability of compound events. Here, an example to a street intersection at a street intersection, a vehicle is classified as either a car or a truck. 
and it can turn left, right, or go straight. About an equal number of cars and trucks go through the intersection and turn in each direction. Use a simulation to find the experimental probability that the next vehicle will be a car that turns right. So let's choose a model. We can use a coin to uh, we can use a coin to model the two vehicle types. We have cars and trucks. Okay, so this is going to be uh, heads is going to be a car and tails is going to be a truck. Next, we can use a spinner divided into three equal sectors right here to represent the three directions as shown: left, right, and straight. That's what they said in the problem here: left, right, and straight. Let's find the sample space for the compound event. There are six different outcomes, and what you could do is you could just see that cars and truck. There's two different types of events there, and there's three types of events here, and you can multiply two times three and get six. But you can see here, this is a car that turns left, a car that turns right, and a car that goes straight, and this is a truck that turns left, a truck that turns right, and a truck that goes straight. You perform the simulation. A coin was tossed and a spinner was done, spun 50 times. The results are shown. So when you add up all these, it's going to be 50. And we find the experimental probability that a car turns right. So a car turns right is 6 out of the 50. So there's 6 out of 50, divide them both by 2, and you get 3 out of 25. So based on the simulation, the experimental probability is 3 out of 25 that the next vehicle will be a car that turns right. And we'll predict the number of so making a prediction will predict the numbers of cars that turn right out of a hundred vehicles that enter the intersection and we'll explain the reasoning well if we had three out of 25 we that also was six out of 50 if I double that that means there's gonna be 12 cars out of a hundred that uh, what, uh, that turn uh, that, that are cars that turn right so that what is the What's the answer? There's 12, 12 cars. The data shows, and explain your reasoning, well, the data shows that six out of 50 vehicles are cars that turn right. An equivalent ratio is 12 out of 100. That's what I just showed right here. It, all fractions are ratios. Okay, so our your turn question is, a jeweler sells necklaces made in three sizes and two different metals. Use the data from a simulation to find the experimental probability that the next necklace is sold, sold is a 20 inch gold necklace. So here's 20 inch gold necklace, there were 12 of them. And I added up all these numbers and it ended up being 75. So that's 12 out of 75. And I can divide each of those by three to get four out of 25, which is our answer. Okay, and so that's what you have to know about all of our work with experimental probability of compound events and thank you for watching.